So I'm just going to start, start from the first one that was asked, and we'll try to get through as many as we can. The first will be um, a question for uh, Dr. Isam. How does, or how do you feel as a Libyan um, in regards to the slavery going on in Libya and the racism that goes on there? How do we combat this issue on a broader scale? As we've learned, you know, racism anywhere is, uh, racism is everywhere, right? So truly, truly, I mean, these, the scourge of racism that has plagued many of these regions is something that needs to be addressed, you know, head on right away. We deal with a lot of these issues. In fact, I'm the president of the Libyan American Alliance, which is an organization that deals with a lot of the Libyan issues. Just, I think, less than 10 days ago, we had a whole session about refugees and migrants in Libya and the, and the discrimination and the human rights abuses that are happening against them. We've gotten, you know, the State Department, we've gotten USAID, we've gotten, you know, major organizations to address this issue. And this issue, if anything, it's actually against the very governments that are in, in existence in Libya that arguably I can have some political support for, you know, because they're supposedly leading, you know, the, the post-revolution changes. But it's unacceptable. Whenever, you know, these things are committed, they need to be changed. And fortunately, our history is marred with a lot of these issues. And I think it needs a very serious reflection and change ASAP. So, Zakam Thank you, Dr. Isam. The next question is, family is the backbone of society, so we must start there. What ways can we take first to aid ills we experience in Islam, such as non-black sisters wanting to marry black brothers, but racist families denying the process? Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, Assalamu alaikum family is the backbone of society, so we must start there. What ways can we take first, uh, first aid, uh, um, what ways can we take first to aid ills we experience in Islam, such as non-black sisters wanting to marry black brothers, but racist families denying the process? Um, I, well, one, I, w I would say that, I mean, it goes both ways. I mean, I, I know, like, there were, um, you know, that there are non-black brothers that want to marry black sisters, but they also want to, you know, respect their families. And so, so there are, even if they go ahead and do what they're going to do and marry who they want to marry, they're dealing with the, with, with the tensions. While at the same time, if you see how many, um, mixed race, like half white, half, you know, Arab or half Pakistani, it's like there's a lot of, you know, so I think seeing those disparities as far as like who marries white converts or where is the intermarriage happening and who's desirable, like there's a lot of work that we have to do in, in addressing that. Um, as far as like the kind of racial healing, I mean, I think that our families have to do the kind of um, healing work. If you don't love yourself as a person, if you don't love your own identity, you're definitely not going to love other people that this society looks down upon. And so their anti-blackness is more of a re reflection of how they see themselves than saying anything about me or you or any of my beautiful black brothers and sisters. So I would highly encourage your families to get decolonized and learn to love themselves. And that is the first step. And you have to learn to love yourself and if, especially if you're seeking solidarity, whether that's through love or doing solidarity actions with black people. Jazakallah khair, Dr. Marjorie. And with that, we will have to conclude. Unfortunately, we can't get to all the questions.